HTC family, good to see you guys tonight. Hope you are having a great, great Monday uh, or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, whenever you're jumping in and watching this. Uh, glad that you guys are joining and that you're able to uh, just to, to join in, to be a part of this. This is our nightly devotion and Monday night, uh, I am a little bit later than normal. Uh, just wrapping up with staff meeting and talking through all the good things that God is doing in our midst, all the things that he is shaking and shifting and changing and moving in different directions. It is such a an honoring and an and exciting time to be walking in the midst, in, in what we're doing together, in what we're able to pursue together as we pursue the kingdom. Hey, Chris, good to see you, bud. Hey, uh, tonight I want to jump in. Uh, I don't know, we've kind of been recapping a lot of different things from our messages here as of late. And I want to continue down that road here real quick as we walk through this devotion tonight. Uh, a couple of things that I want to do. I want to start with a quote that I started with the last two weeks from Smith Wigglesworth because I believe it's a good quote for us to be able to stand and to understand kind of where we stand as a nation, as a country, as a body, as the church, as, as believers in Christ. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth says this, Great faith is a product of great fights. Great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcome of great tests. And great triumphs can only come out of great trials. Hey, church, I don't know what you're walking through in your trial right now. I don't know what the battle or the things that you're facing or the chaos that surrounds you. I don't know what's going on. But I do know that, that again, we serve a God who sees the circumstance that we're in, that sees the, the avenue that we may be walking in in this moment. He sees everything that we stand in in this day. And he is still standing in this moment. So if you are feeling defeated tonight, if you are feeling like you are full of worry, because the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 12 and in Matthew that we are not to worry. There is no reason to worry because worrying doesn't, doesn't add a single moment to our life. So why do we worry? Are we able to trust? And that's, that's where I want to go tonight. I want to help us walk through that avenue of trusting God for more. Again, for believing God for more. Because uh, like we've said, and I've been saying it a lot lately, is I want more. God, I want more of you. I want more direction and more guidance. And I want, I want to just seek you in this day. So, it, you know, understanding that, that great triumph is going to come out of great trials in our life. So if you are facing a trial right now, there is triumphance coming in the midst of that. There is victory coming because of the name of Christ, because he is walking on your behalf, because he is standing and fighting just with you. We serve a great God. We serve an amazing God. Because in, in Luke chapter 12, uh, uh, verse, uh, well, let's hit 24. I talked about ravens this last week. And... Or we can go to Matthew and talk about sparrows, how they, they gather and they look for food all day long and they're able to eat and, the, and they, they're able to be satisfied. I, I challenged a question uh, on, on Sunday as I walked through this message that I think is relevant for us to even walk through tonight as we're walking through a devotion uh, uh, this evening uh, for the, set, for the uh, sparrows and for the sparrows, for the pharaohs and the sparrows. Wow. For the sparrows and the ravens, there we go, let's get it on task. For the sparrows and the ravens, they do go around, they're collecting food, and they are satisfied in their everyday walk. Uh, as we go through our day, as we go through our walk, as we go through the things that are before us in this day, are we satisfied? Can we honestly step back and say, God, I am satisfied with the way that you stand in my life. Hey, Jim, good to see you tonight. Thank you for that comment. Uh, victory in Jesus always. And that's where our satisfaction comes from, is the victory in Jesus. Because only through Jesus are we satisfied. Only through the kingdom are we truly satisfied. It's not by all the things of this world. It's not by the things that are that we think are going to make us happy. It's not by, by fame, by money, by any of those other things. That's not going to give us happiness. What's going to give us happiness is finding the true calling that God has called us into. To be able to step fully into what God has asked us to step into. To have victory in Christ, to have victory in the in the battles that the enemy has been waging or raging against you all of these years, to have victory because Jesus Christ died on a cross for you, that He forgave your sins, that He by the blood of Him that was was sacrificed on that day, by the blood of Him, you are saved and you have victory and power in the name of Jesus, and that's where we get to stand in this day. That's where we get to walk in this day. Uh, Luke chapter twelve twenty four says, "Look at the ravens." They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. You are more valuable than anything, anything in this world. Because God desires and seeks you. He wants you. He wants all of you 
in this day? Are you willing to give yourself completely to him? Are you willing to step fully in with him in this day? Uh, again, I want more. I want to step further with God today. And my prayer is, again, that you want to step alongside and step with that, that it is seeking God. It is moving with God. It is coming after him because as, as again, as the ravens and the sparrows go through the day, they are satisfied. Are you satisfied today? And that is a question that you have to ask yourself, that you have to find out for yourself. Are you fully satisfied in your heart of hearts, walking and pursuing the kingdom in this day? And maybe that's something you can't answer right now. And that's okay. But what I am asking you to answer is, are you okay giving all your worries to God? Are you okay doing that? Because again, the Bible tells us that worrying doesn't add a single moment to our life. There's no reason to worry in this time. We serve a God that has triumphant, that he is fighting and raging war on our behalf. There is victory in Jesus. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Hey, we're going to take just a moment. And we're going to do that. Uh, I want to pray with you right now. I want to pray uh, before we go any further in this devotion tonight. I want to pray that we would give our worries and we would cast our cares to God. Because not knowing the circumstances that surround us, not knowing what's going to happen next, not knowing wherever things are at, it doesn't matter anymore. We need to cast our worries on God. So would you pray with me for just a moment? God, we just give you our worries. We give you the things that cause stress and anguish and angst in our life today. Father, we seek your name. We seek your kingdom. And Father, we, we lay at your feet. So Father, I pray right now for every person that's praying along with me. God, that you would give them a fresh understanding and a worry-free stance in this moment. God, that they would stand firm in who you are, that they would posture firm with you. God, that they would be bold enough to stand with you in this time. God, help them understand who they're called to be in this time, who they're called to be in this moment. God, give them fresh understanding, fresh revelation that no more do they need to worry, no more do they need to step into this. Because again, 1 Peter 5, 7, as we give our worries to you, God, because you care for us. God, we are thankful that you care for us. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I don't want to try and live in a pattern of trying to figure things out anymore. I don't want to try and get all the answers. I don't want to try and have everything in order. What I want to try and do is seek first the kingdom. What I want to try and do moving forward is, God, what are you saying? What are you asking? What are you wanting? What are you desiring from me? So I want to challenge you again here for just a moment. I want you to close your eyes. We've done this a couple different times, but I want you to close your eyes in this moment and just, just take a moment, and I want you to say, Jesus, what do you say about me? Casting all worries aside, casting all this anguish aside, casting all these different things away, Step back for a moment, close your eyes and say, Jesus, what do you say about me? And then listen. I believe that a lot of you heard something from, from God in that moment. Now, if you heard something that is not uplifting, that is, that is condemning or brings pain or brings hurt or um, it's not good, that's not God's voice. That's not him speaking to you. That's the enemy speaking a lie to your mind right now because I want you to di differentiate the difference between those two voices in this moment. So what I want you to do again is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to say, Jesus, what are you saying about me today? I want you to ask him that right now. Jesus, what do you say about me? I believe a lot of you heard in this moment that you're a child of mine. I believe some of you heard that I'm proud of you. I believe some of you heard that um, I desire you. I believe some of you heard that I'm calling you. Maybe some of you heard for the first time that your father loves you. Those are the promises of what God says about us. You are a child of God. You have royalty that, that flows in your veins because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You are chosen by God himself. The Bible says that he chose you. He knows you. He calls you by name. And you are a chosen son or daughter of the Most High. You are his child. So understanding those things, I, I want to practice that. And I want to help you guys pray that and step into that. Because I believe there's importance, especially in this day, of understanding who we are in Christ. And there are a lot of times when we have to stop in our day and say, Jesus, what are you saying about me right now? 
okay, I needed that today, or I needed that in this moment. Thank you for that encouragement. Maybe you're stepping in to a new thing at work or walking into a new place and maybe you're, you're worried or you're anxious about something and you're able to stop for a moment and say, Jesus, what are you saying about me right now? Yeah, that's what I needed. I am your son. I am your daughter. And I am going to do the things that you put before me. Church, we have to come to an understanding that God is always speaking that there's no reason to worry about anything because worrying doesn't add any single thing to our life. But trusting in Jesus gives us all the stance that we need to take with him today. We need to step fully in with God. We need to step more in with him in this day and understand where he's asking us to be. Because again, Luke 12, 31 says this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And when we take moments like this and we say, Jesus, what do you say about me? You're seeking the kingdom. You're seeking what he's saying about you. So take this moment, take these times, tonight in your quiet time or today during your quiet time, just stop. I want you to pause and I want you to say, Jesus, what do you say about me? And I want you to listen to the truth that he speaks in your life in these days. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and he will give you everything that you need. Everything that you need. Not the things you want. Because he does give us those sometimes. But he definitely gives us everything that we need. Church, I hope you were blessed by this tonight. I hope you were uplifted tonight. I hope you understand that there is no, no sense in worrying about anything that's going on in this day. Because worrying about anything doesn't add anything to our life. But understanding the truth of that God is the one that's in control. He is always in control. He is always moving and propelling his kingdom forward. Sometimes it may not make sense. We may not see it the way that we think it should be done. But please rest assured, God is in control in these days. He is moving on your behalf. He's moving on my behalf. And he's advancing his kingdom. So seek first the kingdom of God. And all else falls into place. Let me pray over you. I'll give you a blessing before I head out tonight. And then we're just going to stand together. So Father, I thank you for this, this group that's watching tonight. And I thank you that you have called them into this season, into this time, into this moment. Father, I pray right now for the needs of your body, for the needs of your people. Pray, Father, I pray for physical healing all across this, this communication right now, God, that you would bring physical healing to your church, to your body right now in Jesus' name, that they would be made whole in Jesus' name. I pray for spiritual healing right now in Jesus' name. God, that anything that the enemy has, has wounded, that anything he has tore apart, that anything that he has ripped apart, right now, Jesus, I pray it be made whole in Jesus' name. God, that you bring back into fulfillment, that you bring back into filling, that you bring back into a new stance with your body. God, that they would have boldness and encouragement in these days. God, that they would stand firm and stand strong in the ways that you've asked them to stand. And Father, I pray for any emotional need right now, for any anxiety, for any worry, for any stress, for anything that's going on in their life. God, I pray that it would be still, that it would cease, that it would desist, and it would no longer rise up or crop up or cause commotion within the lives of your people. So Father, I pray right now that all emotional angst be made whole in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name that it no longer stands in any way against or uh, negatively against your body today father I pray for ears to be able to hear your voice in this day the uplifting the encouraging voice of the Holy Spirit God that you would speak clearly and boldly to the ears of your people and God I pray that right now that the feet of these people that they would walk in holiness in this day that, that they would understand that their steps are ordered by you, Lord. God, that you have ordained and appointed these times for right now. God, that you have called each one of them into this time, each one of them into this moment. God, that you have given them words to speak and, and a heart of boldness to step forward into. So, Father, I pray that wherever their feet may fall, God, that they, they walk in obedience and they walk in strength and they walk in truth in you. And, God, I pray that you would give them spiritual strength to overcome the evil one and avoid temptation in this day. God, that they would stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ, that they would know that they are chosen by you and you alone. God, give them a sure footing in this time, in this day. And I pray that God's grace be upon each one of you, each one of you listening today, that your dreams, that your visions, that everything that God is pouring out to you, that he's speaking to you in this day would be fulfilled, that he would move and you would hear his voice clearly. So Father, right now I pray. God, speak to your body, speak to your people right now. God, clarify their mind, clarify their, their thoughts. God, that they would think wholly and truly and only of you. So God, in this moment, Father, we give you praise. Because God, we, we worship you. We give you worship right now because you are fulfilling the things in our lives that you have called us for in such a time as this. God, that you have given us this moment. Because God, you have given us victory. 
You have given us victory in these days. God, we stand in boldness with that victory because you have already said it and you have proclaimed it. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hey, receive this blessing tonight. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. I pray the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray the Lord would lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So be it. Amen. Uh, we're not done yet. Hey, uh, second service Sunday, I, I talked about, and God just allowed me to step back into this. So I, I want you to bear with me for just a moment here. Don't tune out just yet. Uh, I believe that as, as the church, as the body, as believers, each one of us are called into a posturing stance. And what I mean by that is, is uh, I'm not a fighter. I don't really know anything about fighting, but I enjoyed watching boxing. I enjoyed watching Rocky when I was growing up, all those things like that. And the one thing I notice is, is a stance, and it's an athletic stance, whether it be in fighting and boxing, whether it's in football, whether it's in baseball, whether it's in basketball, it doesn't matter. It could be tennis, it could be volleyball, it could be any of these sports. There is an athletic stance or there is a posturing of being ready to take that step, that, that bold step or that, that uh, engagement step. In boxing or in fighting, you don't stand flat-footed. In football, you don't put your toes on the line and wait for the hit to hit you. In baseball, you don't stand straight up and you don't just wait for something to happen. No, you're ready. You're in a stance and you're ready to step. You're ready to go. You're ready to work. And that's what I believe God is asking of us as the church, to be ready. Get ready for that stance. Get ready for that fight. Hey, you guys are getting bonus material right now. This is Devo number two. But being ready to take on what the enemy is putting before you. Maybe it's to be able to, to move a little bit, to be limber, to be flexible, to be able to step and shift differently than you've ever shifted before. But understanding that your toes are not supposed to be flat on the line, that there is a step, there is a sidestep, there is a, a counterbalance. You can't even see my face anymore. I don't know why I stood up. But your feet are stepped back, your posture, your weight is back, and you're able to do multiple different things. I believe that God is asking us to be ready to do multiple different things, to be able to shift and to be able to attack when the attack is needed to be against the enemy. Because there are going to be doors that are going to be opening up very soon that the enemy thinks that he has won, but we are advancing through, that we are crushing what the enemy thinks that he may have control of in this day. So be ready, church. Be ready. Be ready to take the stance that God has asked you to take. And that, that is an, an athletic stance to be able to be ready to advance the kingdom, be ready to take the step. I don't think I'm done with this yet. I believe that God has more for this, but I think I'm, I'm done and sealing that for tonight. But for tonight, understand, be ready. Be ready for what's coming because God is asking you to advance his kingdom in this time. Be bold enough to say the things that God puts on your heart. We just worked through listening and, and practicing hearing what God is saying. Now it's practicing hearing and saying what he's asking us to say. Church, be encouraged, be emboldened, and have a phenomenal night. Be encouraged in this time. There's no need to worry in any of this time. For God is on the throne and he is our king. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much for jumping in and joining us. We love you guys so much. Appreciate you all. And look forward to what God has next for each one of us. But for now, you guys be blessed. And as always, be the church. We love you guys. See you soon.